Chapter Summary of Atomic Habits, and this is Chapter 5, The Best Way to Start a New Habit. So we're going to focus on what it looks like to create a new habit, and I'm going to give you all the solutions and systems that they provided in this chapter so that you can implement them yourself. We're going to focus on the mindset, the method, and the motivation. We're going to pull out those parts from this particular chapter, and I'm going to give you the best bits so that you can implement that into your life and business. So the cues that can trigger a habit come in a wide range of forms, and it could be from the feel of your phone, the smell of chocolate chip cookies, the sound of ambulance sirens. These are all things that can trigger you, right? But the most common cues are time and location. And so when you look at that and you realize that time and location are the factors that are causing you to change or causing your habits to be triggered, then you have more control over what you're doing. And implementation intentions leverage both of these cues. So let's talk about what an implementation intention is. And that's going to fall under method here. So what is an implementation intention? An implementation intention increases the odds that you will stick with your habits. That's what an implementation does. And you know, people who make spe a specific plan for when and where they will perform a new habit are more likely to follow through. You know, like when you're planning to start a fitness uh, routine in the new year, you have a resolution, then if you have a time and a place, you know, it's you're going to the gym at 6 a.m. and it's, it's very specific. So you don't have to even question when or where you're going to do it. You just start doing it. I used to do this when I was working in an office years ago. I would finish work, come down the elevator, walk across the courtyard into the next building, go to the gym, do my workout, finish, shower, go home, have dinner. That was my routine every single day. So the way that you implement an implementation intention is use this formula right here. When situation X is arises, I will perform response Y. So when X arises, I will perform response Y. And basically, what you're doing is you're giving your habits a time and a space to live in the world so that you don't get caught up in whatever is going on. There's always something going on, and if you get caught up in that, then you are going to find reasons and excuses for not doing things. That's the issue with habits. You know, people who make a specific plan of when and where they're going to perform the habits are more, more likely to follow through. And being specific about what you want and how you will achieve it helps you to say no to things that will derail your progress. That's critical. That's worth, that's a note, that's a note worth taking. You know, if you realize that you can say no to something or there's something that you need to say no to, then you make space for the thing that you want, the habit that you want. So the little requests, you know, that come through, they're going to derail us, right? And when your dreams are vague, it's easy to rationalize little exceptions all day long and never get around to the specific things that you need to do to succeed. You know, you let those little things get in the way. So you give your habits a time and a space to live in the world. And the goal is to make the time and location so obvious that with enough repetition, you get an urge to do the right thing at the right time even if you can't say why. For example, I have a morning routine. Get up, make my bed, grab my bottle of water, I drink water, go to the bathroom, put on my fitness gear, write in my journal, go for a walk, get on my bike, do some yoga, some core training and fitness training. Those are all stacked and those are all habitual. And it's the right time and the place. There's no impact from anybody else or anything else going on. I don't have to uh, wonder if I'm going to be distracted. It's early in the morning. There's nothing going on. People aren't going to get in my way. So let's talk about something that's interesting. So it's the Diderot effect. So let me highlight what the Diderot effect is. So the Diderot effect, and it's based on somebody whose name was Diderot. You know, he didn't have money and he was trying to pay for his daughter's wedding. He ended up 
receiving money because he had a library, he had a, a library of encyclopedias that he had created, and um, and so uh, the uh, the Prince of Russia wanted to buy that from him and gave him a hundred you know equivalent of one hundred fifty thousand dollars today, and then he had money, so he bought a scarlet robe, and then he realized. Things were not matching. His robe didn't match his environment, didn't match his furniture. And so the Diderot effect was born out of that because he had buy, he bought new table, the new kitchen table, new chairs, uh, new carpet. He started changing his whole environment to match what he was wearing, which is pretty interesting. So the Diderot effect states that obtaining a new possession often creates a spiral of consumption that leads to additional purchases. And... It is true. We see it all the time. We just don't notice that we're doing it. You know, many human behaviors follow this cycle. Uh, you often decide what to do next based on what you have just finished doing because no behavior happens in isolation. That's for sure. You know, we, uh, we notice that when we do something, you know, let's say we're washing clothes and then we realize that the laundry detergent is low. So then we put it on the list. And next thing you know, we're going to the store and we pick it up. And, you know, there's, there's a whole chain of events that happen just as a result of one action. And each action becomes a cue that triggers the next behavior. So each action becomes a cue that triggers the next behavior. And so then when you realize that your behaviors are being triggered, and you don't know why, then you can question it and start to make some changes. And one of the best ways to build a new habit is to identify your current habit you already do each day, and then stack it on uh, to your new behavior, On you stack it on top. And this is called habit stacking. So let's talk about habit stacking. You know, it's a special form of in implementation intention. Um, you know, and the formula is very simple. The formula is after I current habit, I will new habit. So after you have a ha after you repeat or after you perform a habit that you already have, you will do the next habit. So as an example, I have certain ingredients in my smoothie. So I make tea every night. So after I finish making tea, I will take out the ingredients out of the cupboard for my smoothie tomorrow morning. That's stacking it on top of something I'm already doing. And the key is to tie your desired behavior into something you already do each day, like I just mentioned, right? So once you have mastered this basic structure, you can begin to create larger stacks by chaining small habits together. And when you chain these habits together, then you have a system that you probably not stop for a long time or maybe for the rest of your life. And, you know, if you write down your habits that you repeat daily and, uh, you know, that's that's a way of getting to know what habits you can stack them on top of. That's the, the key here, right? You want to stack them on top of existing habits. So you have to start by recognizing the habits that you have first. So, uh, and in the book, he talks about having a habit scorecard. It's essentially writing down the habits that you do each day. Um, and uh, you can also insert habits and in, in, uh, insert new behaviors into the middle of your current routines. And no matter how you use the strategy, the secret to creating a successful habit stack is selecting the right cue to kicking things off. And your cue should also have the same frequency as your desired habit. So, you know, don't don't make it you know don't don't make a daily habit and try to stack it on top of a, a, a once a week habit or once a month habit. That doesn't work. Um, so the, the way to find the right trigger for your habit stack is by brainstorming a list of your current habits and then writing them down uh, so that, you know, these are the habits I repeat every day. And now what can I stack on top of them so I can simplify my life? Um, or you can create two columns, uh, as you said, in, in the first column, you'd write down the habits that you do each day without fail. And, uh, you know, like make your bed, brush your teeth and so on. And then um, and then you can create a second column. And that second column would be the things that happen without failure, like the sun rises and sunsets and the phone rings and the text message comes in and, you know, something like that. Those are the things that, you know, will happen. You know, habit and here's, you know, we're going to talk about motivation in a second, but habit stacking works best when you the cue is highly specific, and immediately actionable highly specific and immediately actionable. Many people select cues that are too vague, you know, so you can't do that. You have to make sure it's very clear and highly actionable and you can do it right away. 
You know, when I close my laptop, I do 10 push ups. When I uh, enter the kitchen, I meditate for 60 seconds, something like that. You know, these are the kinds of things. So, the, bur- the first law of behavior change to ma- is to make it obvious. Implementation t- intentions and habit stacking are the best ways to create obvious cues for your habits and design a clear plan for when and where the action will take place. So, what's the motivation behind this? Well, implementations increase the odds that you will stack stick with your habits, right? If you have an implementation intention, it's, it gives you more power to stick with your habit. And what's the motivation behind habit stacking? Well, then you get things done easier by chaining small habits together. It's simple. You save time. I mean, if you end up saving hours as a result of these little modifications, isn't that valuable? Saving five hours a week, 10 hours a week, or even an hour a week to start, it's significant. You start realizing the benefit of managing your habits, managing what you're doing, managing what you're thinking, keeping it focused, and getting things done that satisfy you, and it comes easy after a while. Just because you've used these systems, and you are now modifying your behavior to give you the results you want, the satisfaction you want, and you will feel good. You know, we only good feelings are essentially thoughts moving through our body. Louise Hay of Hay House Publishing taught us that. Feelings are thoughts moving through our body. So why not direct our thoughts with our habits? All makes sense. It all ties together. And you can do this. It's completely possible. And I've noticed that I've stacked habits without even reading this book. But now that I know what the system is and the methodology and the mindset and, uh, and the motivation behind it, I can stack better habits. And so can you. So you can make this easier and better for you to live a great life an amazing life and have a really unique experience whereby you're not spending time thinking about things or trying to remember things and trying to do things that you know you should be doing but you're not doing them because you made them too vague you know i should work out more that's very vague so making it clear and specific is is making it uh, actionable so you can get it done all right so that's a quick summary of chapter five in atomic habits best way to start your new habit so take some notes if you if you need to listen to this back and implement your habit stack now or your implementation intentions get to work on those and then start creating your habits let me know how it goes hope this was awesome for you speak soon